Right now on our Fox Sports Hotline, we have the pleasure of being joined by UFC flyweight John Dodson. John, thank you for joining the show. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me on. Thank you so much for joining us again. John is taking on John Moraga at UFC Fight Night Albuquerque on June 7th. That takes place in the Tingley Coliseum. You have to be really excited about being able to fight in your hometown. Hell yeah. It's the first time I actually get to fight in my hometown. And not only that, but one of the biggest promotions in the world. Everybody gets to see what we can do and see this type of show. Them. Well, actually get to see just all of us go at it. Well, this is the UFC's first time in Albuquerque, and now, did you request to be on the card, or did you just get lucky with this one? No, I kept on requesting. I was asking day and night. I was like, they're like, John, you're hurt. Like, it's okay. I'll fight somebody. I'll find a way to heal myself faster. I'll be like a super saiyan to start regenerating anything. Well, well how, start laughing. How, how is, uh, how's that coming along, being injured, and, you know, how's the rehab coming? Uh, it's good. Like, my knee's uh, back, well, back to as normal as it can be for right now. And I'm ready to go. I've been flipping off the walls and making sure everything that possibly potentially could have hurt it, I can do perfect now. Excellent. Good to hear. When you say flipping off the walls, you're somebody I believe is literally doing that. Uh, you know, I remember after your last fight when you won at UFC 166 that you had said it was hard for you to, to find opponents, that it wasn't easy for you to get a fight. How did this one come about as far as being booked with uh, John Moraga? I mean, both of you are obviously top ranked, so that's got to be great news for you. Yeah. Uh, the UFC just said, uh, John, who do you want to fight? And I said, anybody. And they just give me Moraga. So he was the one who drove <laughs> through the short straw, I guess. You can say. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, this is a rematch from 2010. H how have both of you guys, how have you changed since then? Well, I've been knocking out a lot more people than... Uh, as a late Liam, and he's been doing the same thing. Both of us were wrestlers in the beginning, and now we're changed our games to become better strikers. So, do you see this matchup going any way the same? Yeah, with my hand being raised. <laughs> Fantastic! I, I had heard a story that your fighting career actually kind of started because of a job that you had at Chuck E. Cheese. How did that come to be? How did the how did the walk us through the phases of how a job at Chuck E. Cheese got you into the fight game? I was working as a birthday host over at Chuck E. Cheese at the time, and uh, I was hosting one of my uh, coach's son's birthday party. Okay. And he, like a lot of the, there was a whole table full of cops, and they're like, "Hey, you're John Dotson." And the only thing that was going through my mind is, "What did I do wrong?" This time? <laughs> yeah. And now they're out. They just like tra they interrogated me. On where I was going to go to college, and I told them where I was, or I was going to go. I told them UNM, and they had like this blank stare and like, like utter disappointment at the exact same time. Like, they don't got a wrestling program. What are you going to do? I was like, ah, I'm going for computer engineering and, and computer science. And then they kind of like, giggled and laughed and told me, dude, you're wasting your talent. You're the most athletic guy I've ever met in my life. Why don't you go try out mixed martial arts? And at the time, I kind of knew a little about it, but I just thought it was like street fighting. So I was like, ah, I'm not going to really do that. But then, then you, there, oh, go the ahead. First day I walked in, I got my butt kicked by everybody. I was writing up a hit list of everybody that I knew to beat before I retire. <laughs> and now, have you always trained at Jackson's? I mean, tell us a little bit about the camp, how uh, you know it is working with the different sparring partners you have. I mean, that must be a really, really great camp to be training at and, and coming up through. Well, it's real motivating because I can see all different types of uh of great talents that come in and out. So people have been present, the past champions have been in and out of the gym, and it's a good, it's a, just a great atmosphere. It sounds like more like a family rather than just having like normal teammates or even just like your acquaintances here and there. We all go out and go do stuff. Uh, a lot of us like to go party and have fun with each other. And a lot of and that's what we do. We party chill. We just keep each other with that positive attitude instead of like some people who have. All that negative energy around them. We have enough positivity all the time. And we are talking to John Dodson, who is fighting John Moraga at UFC Fight Night, June 7th in Albuquerque, New Mexico. John, we're really happy you're joining the show. Uh, obviously, we're we're big fans of yours. Uh, and you talked about the Chuck E. Cheese uh, and, you know, you were working a birthday party. One of the cool things that I've seen you've done, you've done some charity stuff. And I saw you here at Boys Town uh, when you were, a, a, it was probably about two years ago, you were here talking to a bunch of kids and man, those kids just seemed to gravitate towards you. And I don't know if it was because of the story. What was, what was that? It's 
because we're the same height. It's the same height. <laughs> well, I thought that was amazing. You actually had to jump up on the chair to talk to the kids. I thought that was pretty funny. Well, because you didn't see how tall everybody else was compared to me. They yeah. were all sitting, sitting down. They were I like or I level with the kids, and I still wasn't I level with any of the kids. So I had to make myself look bigger than life. Yeah. Now, one of the stories you told uh, there, or and actually, I had heard someone before tell you about it, and. I, I think there's some video of the in, 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 on the internet. I'm not sure if there is. You please got to let me know where it is. But I hear you run faster on four, like on two, on on all fours than you do on two feet. Is this true? Oh, I actually used to tell you the truth. Like uh, I, I know, like uh, sounds weird, but I always like walking on all fours just because it seems easier. My brother gets all mad because I walk around the house that way. I walk on my hands all the time. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> that's, I go up and down the stairs that way. That's hilarious. And, and, you know, you talked about your athleticism. And one of the things that I thought was absolutely amazing and so cool is last year I'm sitting there watching TV on a Monday night. And who pops up on my screen on Ninja Warrior but you, man? What was that like? Man, I was so mad. I got <laughs> that I was like... I can't believe I didn't finish the, the regional course. Also, I can't believe it that I switched my grip in, like, in midair. I was like, who did that? I was like, so mad at myself. I was like, you idiot. You have to come back next year and to come crush this. And, uh, I didn't get my chance. To, so I was, like, I was a little disappointed. So are you going to go back and do it again? I'll go back next year. Uh, like all the regionals and stuff like that happened during my fight camp. So I can't. I couldn't go up compete for this year's Ninja Warrior. So I'm a little disappointed in my, my vengeance. Ah, uh, nice. Well, one tournament you did win was obviously the Ultimate Fighter Season 14. You defeated TJ Dillashaw at Bantamweight to do so. I was curious what your thoughts were on TJ's upcoming fight here versus Hanem Barrow at UFC 173. Sure, I'm actually glad that TJ Dillashaw is going to fight Hanem Barrow. It shows that, that I'm fighting, that I beat a worthy opponent for the fight, uh, for the finale. Like, a number, not just a number one contender, but he's come in. Trying to fight for that title, and you get getting that opportunity to showcase his skills. Well, one of the things that's cool is you you beat TJ at one thirty five, but now you're fighting at one twenty five, a weight class that hasn't always been around for you. How are you feeling now that we find you finally get to really not have to, you know, you get to fight at your own comfortable weight class? Uh, it feels great because I get to punch people that aren't as big as or bigger than I am, and they actually go down a lot easier. Whew. Now, do you, do you, do you uh, have to cut a lot of weight or no? I have to cut about 30 pounds to get on 25. Wow. Wow. And what do you usually come back to up to on fight night? About 145, 146. Wow. That's pretty interesting. And, you know, with the growth of the division, you have now the first flyweight bout headlining a UFC pay-per-view card. That's at UFC 174. Demetrius Johnson takes on Ali Bagotinov. What are your thoughts on that fight, and how exciting is it for the division to finally headline a pay-per-view? Uh, it means that they're showcasing the right weight class. They always talk about flyweights being the most technical and most athletic people in the world, so let us go ahead and do them in event. With Ali versus uh, Demetrius Johnson, going to be a quick fight, very fast pace. I see, I see Demetrius Johnson still going to be dominating the fight. The guy's... Pretty much one of the fastest is probably yeah, is the fastest guy in the division. His cardio is going to is going to surpass Ali, so that's where Ali needs to work on. If not, he has a puncher's chance he can knock him out. That's the same with the dude. He hits hard. How many wins do you think you need to get that rematch with Johnson? Depends on how long I finish Moraga. If I finish him, if I finish Moraga in the first round, like I've done in my most recent fight. I hope I can get that title shot right away. But if not, we'll see. The UFC is the one who controls that. And every time I keep on thinking that I'm ready to go, they keep on reminding me that I'm not. Oh, well, you know what? I always find you exciting is anything to watch. You're fast. You're fun. You're clearly entertaining. And I'm really glad that the flyweights have been put on the map. Oh, me too, because it gives me a place to show, showcase my skills. <laughs> you like me. You really like me. Exactly. That's what I got that's two what guys here coming to me right field. now. Uh, that's awesome. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, John. Uh, but basically, tell us, tell us how you think this fight will go down in the in the Tingley Coliseum. You got that home field advantage. How how much well, do you think that plays a role for you? Man, it plays a big role for me because I'm one of those people that thrives and lives 
off of the crowd or cheering for me or booing for me, the more the louder the place gets, the more excited I am to fight. I'm there for just pretty much there for the attention. I know that sounds bad to be a fighter. Like, oh, you only do it for the attention. You don't want to be good. Like, no, not really. <laughs> Well, we're going to go ahead and wish you all the best of luck. It is time for us to head out to a break here, but we want to thank you again for spending the time on our show with us. Again, John Dodson will be fighting John Moraga at UFC Fight Night Albuquerque, Tinkley Coliseum, June 7th. John, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Like I said, thank you guys for having me on, and I will want to be coming back on after this fight. We'd love to have you. Thank you again. Ooh.